If there's one thing I've learned after 10 years of living in Prague, Czechia, it's that the Czechs are different. Heck, I've made hundreds of videos about the things Czechs do differently. But perhaps my favorite ways that Czechs distinguish themselves from the rest of the world, and especially from Americans, is the traditions of the Czech Christmas season. So in this video, we'll count the ways that Czech culture delights, surprises, and puzzles us foreigners during the holidays. And hopefully it will inspire you to add a little Czechness to your Christmas this year. If you were to ask Americans, where's the Christmas spirit in your town? They'd probably say the mall, or these days, I don't know, the back of the Amazon delivery truck. Basically, all the Christmassy lights and colors that remind us of the holiday spirit are a capitalist ploy to get you to spend more money at said shopping venue. Most American towns and cities don't really have public space to get together and enjoy holiday cheer. In European cities, and especially in Prague, the squares are decorated with trees and ornaments and petting zoos and concert stages for carolers and performances. And when you're a brand new expat to Prague and don't know anyone, you can go to one of these squares and feel like you've been invited to a neighborhood Christmas party. And you don't have to buy a thing. Now, before any culture gets started on the Christmas cheer, they have to determine who is allowed to participate. And by that, I mean who's been naughty and who's been nice. Every year, this information is tracked by a team of data specialists in the workshop at the North Pole. But since Santa Claus does not actually deliver presents to Czech children, <gasps> don't worry, we're gonna get into that scandal in a minute. The Czechs have allocated the responsibility of determining who has been naughty and who has been nice to Mikolaj, a bishop from Greece. And being a hardworking Greek, he likes to get his data out early in the season, specifically on the eve of Čert a Mikolaj day, or December 5th. Mikolaj sets out with his assistants, not elves, but Andial and Čert, or angel and the devil. They travel from door to door, doling out judgments and sentences to Czech children. If a child has been good all year, Andia will give him sweets, fruits, and small gifts. If the child has been bad, Chert will kidnap him, throw him in a sack of coal, and take him directly to hell. Not a total heartless monster, Chert will at least give the naughty child a potato to snack on during the journey. Unlike the bad kids on Santa's list, naughty Czech children have some negotiating power. To keep from going to hell, and depending on their performance, possibly getting some candy, the child has the option of reciting a poem or singing a song. If the performance pleases Mikolaj, he will advise Andiel to dole out some candy and Chert to back off until next year. In Hollywood, we have child actor labor laws against performing under dress, but what do you want? This is the Czech Republic. Dance, kid, dance. American families will usually procure the Christmas tree a day or two after Thanksgiving, and then decorate it immediately, making it the centerpiece of a home's Christmas spirit. Mom will pull out the boxes of ornaments, collected over generations, traditional and in keeping with the true meaning of Christmas. Czechs procure their Christmas tree a little closer to Christmas Eve, and the tradition dictates that the tree is not decorated until the evening of the 24th. So I guess there's just a naked tree sitting in a Czech living room, just standing there for weeks and tempting the cat and bringing no joy? The Czech tree will eventually get decorated, and the Czechs have some very specific types of ornaments, like dried fruits and sweets and handmade traditional ornaments, which you can purchase at the Czech Christmas market if you wish. In the olden days, the tree was then shook so that the fruits and nuts would fall to the ground and the children would collect them as sweet Christmas rewards. Somehow, I don't think that would charm today's children. But the Czech family plays no part in decorating their own tree. They outsource that task to a total stranger 
who they've never even met. We'll get into that in a minute. It's not Santa. Now you might be fine letting total strangers into your home to decorate your tree, but you should never let strangers into your digital home, especially uninvited. With all the shopping online and doling out of card numbers this season, you should be protecting your data with NordVPN. Let's say you're at the mall looking for a specific gift. The saleswoman says that item is only available online and it's selling fast. And so you whip out your phone and connect to Opodni Centrum free Wi-Fi and you put in your payment details to purchase the item. That free Wi-Fi is actually connected to the dude in the cafe next door who now has all of your payment information. Merry Christmas. But when you use NordVPN on your mobile device and you can connect it to up to six devices, it encrypts your data and hides it from cyber criminals trying to steal it. And its threat protection function protects you from ads and trackers and malware. Win-win. This month, NordVPN is offering a special deal for DreamProg viewers. Go to the link in the description box below to get your two-year plan with an exclusive deal plus four bonus months for free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. This season, give yourself the gift of peace of mind and limit the visiting strangers to invisible babies. Oh, we'll get to him in a minute. Christmas meals around the world vary, but one thing most cultures have in common is that the Christmas dinner table is filled with the best cuisine the culture has to offer. Even people that don't celebrate Christmas fill their bellies with their very favorite foods. Dream Japan, that's a whole other channel. For many, it's the one time of year we get honey glazed ham or caramelized sweet potatoes or Christmas pudding. And for the Czechs, it's the one time of year they get to eat carp from the muddy pond down the road. Now there's nothing wrong with carp, to each his own. And in times of famine or war, I'm sure it's delicious. But you gotta ask, is this the best food that the Czech lands have to offer? And second, do you even really like it? In fact, they don't. I've never heard a Czech go, Mmm, I can't wait for that Christmas carp. But having something to complain about is what makes it a truly Czech holiday. And so carp for dinner it is. If you're on the streets of Prague the week before Christmas and you have a strong stomach, you can pick out a carp from your corner fishmonger. Literally, they're standing on the corner with the carp swimming in a little baby pool. The fishmonger will cut off the poor fish's head right in front of you. Or if you have a taste for blood yourself, you can take the carp home and let it swim around in the bathtub before you fry it up for Christmas dinner. Now imagine in America that there were just crates of turkeys on the corner of your block and you'd just point to one and the turkey monger would pick it out and chop off its head and give it to you to take home to eat. Or even better, give it to you live and you can take it home for a little Johnny to poke at for a few days before, you know, eating it. Even though they keep up the tradition to buy the carp, many Czechs actually eat rizak for Christmas dinner, which is essentially schnitzel, but impossible for foreigners to pronounce, which makes it an especially Czech dish. Say it with me, rizak, rizak. These days, Czechs who wish to keep up the tradition but are concerned with animal cruelty will buy the carp, play with it for a few days in the bathtub, and then release it into the freezing cold Vltava River, where it will then wash up on the shores in time for New Year's. Again, imagine if the night before Christmas we had an attack of conscience and just released our turkeys into the countryside. Now, potatoes are not just a kid's snack food for the journey to hell. They're also a much beloved side dish at Czech Christmas dinner. So carp, rizek, potato salad, oh, and fish soup. These are the Czech Christmas dinner table essentials. There is nothing harder for an American child than falling asleep on Christmas Eve knowing that very soon, the Santa Claus will be in their house with a sack full of Christmas presents for them. But here's the twist. Santa won't come unless the child is sound asleep. 
it is perhaps the hardest thing that an American child will ever have to endure. Mommy knows this, and so she's always sure to add a little something special to that glass of warm milk before bedtime. Then, when the American child wakes on the morning of the 25th, still hungover from the warm milk, he will quickly sober up, lose all control, and attack the pile of presents like a cat in a bag full of catnip. On the other end of the spectrum, Czech children display some epic self-control. American children would never survive a Czech Christmas. So, presents are delivered to Czech children on the evening of the 24th. Not while they sleep, but while they sit in the next room eating a plate of fish. Oh, they know what's going on in the room next door. Gifts just poofing themselves into existence at that very moment, only a few meters away, as they take another bite of fish. Now imagine if it had been Czech children at the Stanford marshmallow test. I see your two marshmallows, and I raise you 45. Go ahead and start counting them. I'll just be here eating my fish. I could do this all day. The self-control is frankly inspiring. And now the part you've all been waiting for. Why does Santa avoid the Czech Republic? And who is this baby creepster decorating all the Czech Christmas trees? Santa does not deliver to the Czech Republic because the Czechs don't believe in him. Not even a little bit. Not even when they're young. Is it because they're a cynical bunch, skeptical of everything? Yes, but also because they have an older tradition. One at least remotely in keeping with the actual meaning of Christmas, which has been lacking in this entire video so far. My mother is weeping. Ježíšek is the affectionate Czech name for baby Jesus. And yes, the birthday boy himself spends the entire day before his birthday delivering gifts to Czech children and decorating their Christmas trees with his little baby hands. And he works really fast. I mean, he basically covers about four million homes in the length of time it takes for a kid to eat a plate of carp, which actually can take a while. He then rings his tiny bell and poof, he's back out the window from whence he came. The children in the house then run into the room to discover a decorated tree and gifts for all, which they then open on the night of the 24th. Ironically, despite all of this Christmas tradition, Czechs are some of the most atheistic, or at least agnostic, people in the world. But that doesn't stop them from attending Midnight Mass on Christmas Eve. But just to cover, you know, their bases, earlier that evening, they go hog-wild into superstition and fortune-telling. They determine next year's health by reading the pattern of seeds in an apple. Czech single ladies chuck a shoe over their shoulder to determine the likelihood of marriage and Czech men place a carp scale in their wallet so that money sticks to them the following year. If you're interested in more details or interested in watching two clueless Americans trying to recreate these Czech traditions, I made a video for you right here. We Americans like to watch big box office hits on Christmas, like Home Alone, celebrating the rugged individualism of the little hero who will defend his property at all costs. Or Love Actually, the hilarious antics of several Brits who are catastrophically bad at romance. Anglo-American popular movies reflect the trials of our modern Christmas season. The onerous travel, the trappings of consumerism, the difficulty of finding someone to share your schnapps with. Czechs enjoy a very different genre of movie at Christmas time, the fairy tale. And they take their fairy tales very seriously, and they're not at all just for kids. Česká televize will show as many as nine fairy tales in one day, for several days over Christmas. Many of them are generations old stories along the lines of Brothers Grimm's tales, with witches and princesses and water goblins and dragons. And Cheska Televise premieres a new fairy tale every Christmas Eve to add to the collection. If you're not in the Czech Republic, you can always flip on your VPN to watch them. Hmm? And of course, there is the modern classic of Czech Christmas, Palishki, which for me connects all of these components of Czech traditional Christmas together. The food, the fortune telling, the carp, 
the tragic history, and all wrapped in a big bow of Czech humor. And if you haven't seen Polishki, or if you simply want an American's take on this Czech classic, then you should definitely watch my review here. Hansa, Tobik, and I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And if you've never been to the Czech Republic during the Christmas season, now is the perfect time to buy your ticket for 2023. Uvidíme se příště. Ahoj.